Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be reading Friends to Lovers Romances for an entire week. But before I tell you what books I'm gonna be reading and what sources I got these books from, I wanna tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Now you may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing. But did you know that Skillshare has hundreds of career focused classes too? The new year is the perfect time to reinvent yourself and your goals. One of my goals this year is to eventually launch my own photography business. With the help of Skillshare, I have been leveling up my skills over the past few months on how how to use my digital camera to the best of its ability. Obviously, I have a YouTube channel. I know how to use my camera for video, but I've always been really interested in, again, like getting better at those crucial photography skills, learning what f-stop and ISO mean. And I feel like I've been really gaining a ton of skills here on Skillshare. It really got me thinking that I would love to use my newfound photography skills and open up my own photography business. I am not totally versed on how to build a brand and develop the skills that I need to be able to run a successful business. And with the help of Skillshare, I have been leveling up those skills when it comes to branding and all the other things that make up a business. The course that I've taken most recently is from Rebecca Minkov and it's called Build Your Business and Brand, Translating Your Passion into a Plan. And I've been learning so many valuable skills that I'm so excited to put into use. Something I hadn't thought about when deciding on my next business was developing my own distinction, which this course really taught me about. Having a passion is awesome, but setting yourself apart in the market is super important, especially for small business owners. After taking this course, I was able to sit down and develop business goals. And this past week, I bought a website domain so I could get started on building my website. The courses on Skillshare have really opened my mind up to what a business can be. I've always been traditionally employed, but I love that with Skillshare, I'm gaining the skills to find my own creative voice and style. Jobs don't have to be one size fits all, and you can learn how to design a career that fits you. And no goal is too small. I love that with Skillshare, I don't have to be intimidated about thinking about my future. Skillshare takes the pressure off of you by starting small and building skills step by step. Whether you're looking to explore your creative and career options, or want to learn how to become your own boss, Skillshare has the courses to help you get there. The first thousand people to use the link in my description, we'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now, let me quickly run you through what books I'm going to be reading for this Friends to Lovers video. Obviously, I'm so hyped to be doing this. I love this series here on my channel where I pick a particular trope and I read from that trope for an entire week. I've already done it with Enemies to Lovers and with Fake Dating. So now I'm doing Friends to Lovers and at the end of the video, I'll be asking you for your help with uh, my next trope that I'm going to be reading from. But first, let me again run you through those books that we're gonna be reading for this video. First up, we have The Love Wager, and I try to pick the same sources for each of these videos. So there are six different books I'm going to be reading, and they all come from like the same sources. Like I'm using Instagram, I'm using YouTube comments, I'm using Patreon, etc. So The Love Wager is a recommendation that I got from Instagram. I was searching just the hashtag for friends to lovers, and I kept seeing this book over and over again. This post by Reading and PJs really stood out to me, and I'm just really excited to give this one a try. I read a Lynn Painter book recently. I think it's called Mr. Wrong Number. I think that was her adult romance debut. You. I'm just excited to give this one a try. I love, again, Friends to Lovers. I'm doing this video because I love Friends to Lovers, and I just want to prove, honestly, that it's like one of those superior romance tropes. So very excited to give this one a try. Next, I'm going to be reading a book recommended to me by a patron, and that is Wait For It by Mariana Zapata. This is one of the few Mariana Zapata books that I have not read yet, and honestly, I don't know much about any of the books on this list, but I do know that this one follows a single parent, so I'm very excited to see kind of how this one goes, and if this one is one of my more favorite Mariana Zapata reads. Next is a recommendation I got on Amazon. Again, I like to type into the Amazon search bar trope sometimes because a lot of the times authors will kind of put that in the tag for their book. In particular, this one is Blindsided by Amy Dawes, and I believe the Amazon search result said something like Blindsided, a friends to lovers romance. So I knew that this one was one that I had to pick up. I've heard really good things about this author in the past. I believe this one's like set in England too, which I think makes it a little bit more exciting. Fingers crossed that this one is incredible. Next, we have Getaway Girl by Tessa Bailey. This is one that was recommended to me in my YouTube comments, and I'm excited to try this one. This is one of Tessa Bailey's older books, and the only thing I know about this one is that our heroine basically saves the hero from being jilted at the altar. I think it's really interesting, and I'm excited to see how that turns into a friends to lovers relationship. Next is a YouTube recommendation. So for these, I just search a trope, and I watch videos by other booktubers who recommend books based on the trope. So for this one, I did Queen Move by Kennedy Ryan, and it's recommendation from Brie from In Love and Words. She just really sold me on this one. I love Kennedy Ryan 
one and I love a childhood friends to lovers thing so I'm very excited to give this one a go. And then lastly we have the one that is my choice. I always do a reread so that way I can sort of level the playing field a little bit and know that for sure I'm gonna have one favorite book with this particular trope whenever I do these sorts of videos and that's gonna be People We Meet on Vacation by Miss Emily Henry. I love Emily Henry. I love her writing and this is my absolute favorite book by her. Fingers crossed that her next one is just as good but I know that I love this book and I'm very excited to reread it for this video. So without further ado let's go ahead and get into the vlog portion of this video where I'm gonna read all of the Friends to Lovers juicy books, rank them on my traditional scale that I'll tell you about once we get into the video, and you know, hopefully just have a good time. So let's go ahead and get into the vlog portion of this video. Happy Tuesday, my friends. I am fighting a headache with all I've got. I've taken a couple Advil. I'm hydrating. I'm trying to not look at anything, but you know what? Nothing's gonna keep me down. I need to talk to you about this book. Uh, I decided to pick up People We Meet on Vacation first. I think that's been like the trend is picking up the book that I've read before first. I love this book. We know that I love this book and I only read it once so I was unsure if it would be as good upon reread and it certainly is. I'm sorry friends to lovers. I think this might be the highest rated video. Well highest rated. Books in this video are going to be most highly rated by me I'm assuming because there's one thing I like. It's friends to lovers. For the uninitiated this book's better two main characters Alex and Poppy met in college before Poppy dropped out. Developed an unlikely friendship because Poppy is this sort of I want to say quirky but but she is a sort of flaky individual who doesn't really know exactly what she wants out of life. She's constantly traveling, trying to escape something, you know? We don't know what that something is uh, until like a little later on in the book when we find out like, oh, like she didn't love her home life and like she likes her parents, but she didn't like her high school and blah, blah, blah. She's trying to like find her identity, I guess, by like traveling around a lot. Ends up working at a travel publication. And because she does that, she gets to invite her best friend with her on these summer vacations that they go on yearly. Her best friend is a school teacher named Alex. Again, they met in college and uh, he is the kind of straight-laced anxious one, which I love a straight-laced anxious man. Hello. They, you know, are going on trips together, but they stopped talking after one of these trips a couple of years ago. Poppy is desperate to rekindle her relationship and her friendship with Alex, and she invites him on one last hurrah kind of trip. For some reason, I remember it being a lot more dramatic. They're like falling out or whatever, and in the book it's not. But beyond that, everything else is exactly as I remembered, which is exactly what I wanted. Banter that is already built into this friendship, I am adoring. And I was reading a one-star review of, actually of this book before picking it up again. Someone was saying, I hate friends to lovers. I feel like why wouldn't they have made a move on each other in the 12 years that they've known each other, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, like I find it so convincing in this book because these two really needed the friendship. They really need each other. They're scared that if they act on these feelings that they have for each other, the other person might reject them. And honestly, I get that. To me, that is ultimately so high stakes because you've got this person in your life, they've been in your life for a long time, and even if you're developing feelings, like, you don't want to say anything because you don't want to risk that friendship and you risk it not ever being the same again. So to me, that's ultimately high stakes. And also just the banter and the relationship building between Alex and Poppy that we're seeing on page with the flashbacks of their last vacations. It's good stuff. It is good stuff and I stand by it and I'm just desperately hoping and praying The Happy Place by Emily Henry is just as good. I have the audiobook and I am going to be reading it or listening to it, I guess, uh, after this video. It's like the next video I'm doing or like next video I'm reading for. Anyway, I'm very hyped for that one. But all that to say, I am loving this. I love this book. I just do. I don't think I'm ever gonna stop. And I need more friends to lovers books like this with anxious uptight heroes like in my life because that is my that is my thing. If you're looking for another anxious update hero, like you loved Alex, definitely pick up Twice Shy by Sarah Hochul. Same vibes. Different heroine, but like same hero vibes. So I'm gonna finish this. Uh, hopefully my headache abates and I will be able to finish this. After that, I'm gonna be starting in on Get Away Girl by Miss Tessa Bailey. I have the audiobook and I'm hoping by listening and closing my eyes that I am able to get cracking on this video because you know what y'all? I have to finish this. ASAP Rocky. I have a Taylor Swift concert to attend. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to put my hair back here. I I'm wearing a sports bra. All right, I'm clothed, but we're keeping it from here up. You don't need to see the goods. Finished, people we meet on vacation, and I also thought I could update you on Getaway Girl by Tessa Bailey. This book, y'all, it is everything. It is a five-star read still the second time around. I will say Poppy's actions near the end of the book did irritate me, but that happened the first time I read this book as well. I think it makes the book all the more real. I think this really shows Emily Henry's greatness, especially near the end. Like, yes, Poppy does some stupid shit, but that being said, I think that Emily Henry isn't necessarily always going for the most likable female main characters. I think she's going for characters that are very real. And that is definitely the case here, which I really, really appreciate. I, I mean, I said it in the first clip. I just love how these two know each other, how they respond to each other, how they um, have these shared inside jokes that we get to be in on. I love the hookup scene. I don't even know if it's really a scene, but the time that they get together, like kind of midway through the book, it's hot stuff. And I was here for it. I 
love this book. Again, I'm really praying and hoping that Happy Place will be a good one. I'll be vlogging it for my channel, so you'll see that in like a week. But um, yeah, five stars. Friends to Lovers is just incredible. Okay, the other things on my scale though are how sexy was this book and how much do I think Friends to Lovers is a component of this book? I think in terms of Friends to Lovers, this is a five star. I think we got to see the development of the friendship on page. I think we got to see how their friendship developed again over the course of you know these trips that they were going on and that's really how they connected for the most part. They didn't spend a lot of time with each other outside of those trips. So five stars in that regard. And then for the sexiness, I think I'm going to give this book like a three. I found it hot. I definitely think this is like the hottest of Emily Henry's books, but it's not like an out steamy, sexy deliciousness. I definitely, again, think this is the hottest of her books. If I were to rate her other books on that kind of scale, it'd be like a one or a two star. So I think three is generous with the sexiness, but Emily Henry doesn't do like a lot of on page, like bumping and grinding and stuff like that, which is fine. So um, yeah, a 4.33, which I think is the highest score that I have awarded a book. I think I also gave On Honeymooners a 4.33, which I think feels right. So loved this. Let's talk about Getaway Girl though. I'm not loving this one as much. I can't remember where I got this recommendation. I don't think it was Instagram. Oh, apparently it was from my YouTube comments, which I think is interesting. So this book is about our two main characters who I conveniently cannot remember the name of. Where with audiobooks, I just like never remember the names of the characters. Our heroine who is kind of the daughter of the town skank for for lack of a better word. And she is there for her cousin's wedding, but her cousin ends up leaving her groom at the altar. And our heroine feels really bad for the groom. She doesn't know him, but he's a politician and he just looks like a really nice guy. And so as he is escaping uh, this yes, doomed wedding that's not going to happen, she ends up offering him a ride and a bottle of Grey Goose. And so he is staying with our heroine and he is finding a lot of comfort staying with her. And she is finding a lot of comfort having him there as well. She has been a serial dater because she never wants to like lead men on or something like that. I don't really know. I guess it's like the opposite of what her mom has done, which is like pining for a man who doesn't really love her kind of thing. There's going to be a budding friends to lovers relationship because he's going to be staying at her place. In the scene I just listened to, that the first night happens and then he comes back to her place and he's like, I should probably leave. And she's like, yeah, you should probably leave. And he's like, I don't want to. And she's like, I also don't want you to. So I guess he's going to be staying with her for some indeterminate amount of time. And I guess we will see where that leads, but it's not terrible. I like, really don't have any strong feelings about it. I'm not blown away. I think this is an older book by Tessa Bailey, but I've heard mixed things. Some people tend to love this book. Some people are like, eh, about it. But yeah, I'm interested to see where it goes. And I definitely know this one's going to be steamier than people we meet on vacation. So anyway, I'm going to finish this book off probably, and then I'll let you know my final thoughts and feelings bright and early tomorrow morning. All right, working with low battery. Happy Wednesday. Let's talk a little bit about Getaway Girl because I just finished it and I actually just got 35% into another book that I'm actually going to DNF. So fun stuff. Getaway Girl, I thought actually was pretty fun. It wasn't the most romantic thing ever and I really wanted more of the friends to lovers aspect to come together, but I didn't dislike it. I still, for the life of me, can't remember the names of the characters. I was being very um, attentive when I was listening to <laughs> the last part of this book. I was actually getting my toes done, getting a little pedicure and listening to it. Nothing quite like being in a public space listening to smut, right? right? Like it was, um, it was a time for sure. But basically our hero is running for mayor. He ends up becoming mayor and he has to kind of keep his friendship and relationship kind of on the low down with the heroine who again has kind of like a bad reputation around town because of her mom and everyone assumes she's a floozy as well because I suppose her mom was a homewrecker. I really liked the smutty scenes in this book. I feel like that was definitely what really stood out to me. Just feel like the friends to lovers part was definitely lacking. I didn't really feel a friendship chemistry kind of between the hero and heroine. Like, yes, she saves him. Yes, she lets him stay at her place, but I didn't really feel like, oh, wow, these two, like, I could definitely see the chemistry. Basically, the polar opposite of people who meet on vacation, where there was so much chemistry between the characters, but just not a lot of sex. In this book, we had a lot of sex and not a lot of, like, on-page relationship development. And I feel like there's a time and a place for both, so I'm not mad at it. I think my overall rating for this book would be, like, three and a half stars. I think I'm gonna leave it at three stars, but it was really enjoyable. Like, it was definitely a fun summary read. I feel like the smut in this book for me like a four. I genuinely really liked the smutty scenes in this book I feel like it definitely had that sexy factor going on But in terms of friends to lovers, I'm gonna have to give it a one star I feel like this was really lacking in the friendship department And I feel like if you were really craving that like sweet friendship vibe Like you're not going to get it in this book So the overall rating for this one I think is like a 2.66 Which I know seems a little bit low, but it's fitting I think given how I felt about this book now before my camera 
battery dies, let me briefly tell you about the book that I'm going to DNF. I have not DNF'd a book for these videos yet, I don't think, but unfortunately I was having some, some personal issues with this book and it's not that it's a bad book, it's just uh, personally triggering to me at the moment. I am dealing with some health issues right now and so reading about similar, uh, not the same, but similar health issues is just not something that I'm really in the market for. So anyway, all that to say, I DNF'd Queen Move by Miss Kennedy Ryan. Kennedy Ryan is really good at dealing with hard-hitting topics in her books. I feel like she excels at handling the hard things in life, but I think if you're dealing with hard things in your life, especially things that are similar to what the characters in a book are dealing with, um, it can just not feel great. Sometimes it can, it can be catharsis for sure, but then other times it can just not feel great to read about. Um, and I just got to a point in the book where our character has like a breakdown about her health situation and I was like, okay, who I can't do this right now. So <laughs> while this might be a fantastic friends to lovers story, I'm just not in a place where I can uh, read a book like this right now. Briefly, as you know what the book is about, it's about our two main characters, Kimba and Ezra, I believe. They kind of grew up side by side together. He ends up kind of moving away when they're in middle school after they have their first kiss, so they can never really have that relationship that they really wanted to have after developing that friendship. Later on, they come back into contact with each other, and I believe she is like 37 or 38 at the time, so definitely like much later in life. I was seeing some goodness. I think she's like a campaign manager or something like that. I don't remember what exactly his role or title is, but um, no, I was, I was interested, I guess, in the story. I wasn't overly interested. It's definitely not like the, the best opener to a Kennedy Ryan book so far. Um, again, I'm just like uh, having to DNF it for personal reasons. So um, anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. All right, it's like 7.30 and I'm 50% into The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. It's cute, I'm liking it. This book's about our two main characters, Hallie and Jack. Generic names, I can never remember. And at the start of the story, they have this sort of like meet cute, uh, unfortunate meet cute. I don't know what you call it if it's like a meet cute accident. Is it still meet cute? Anyway, into a situation where they have a one-night stand, they never see each other again, except for they see each other on a dating app. Because of this one-night stand that they both had a lot of fun in, they decide that they were going to like strike up a friendship almost. Like they had a really good like banter relationship before they slept together. We get to see them kind of meet before they had sex. And then we get to see them on the dating app kind of like meeting each other. And then they yes, strike up this bet that whoever like finds their perfect match on the dating app first um, wins. And they have, I guess, prizes. She will give him like a signed baseball if he wins and she will get a like five day vacation in Paris or something. It was supposed to be his honeymoon, but he's obviously no longer with that woman. And that's part of like the meet cute situation at the beginning. I don't want to spoil it because I think it's kind of fun and an interesting like setup to the book. At this 50% mark, she is taking him as her fake date to a family wedding. I believe it's her sister's wedding and uh, it's her perfect sister's wedding. So I'm sure there's going to be some sort of like family, not issues, but like, you know, family conflict whenever she gets there and she's going to have to fight her feelings for him. He just kissed her at like the airport terminal they're about to leave from and they're both like, wow, that was such a good kiss. Uh, so far it's cute. There's a lot of like text conversations between the two of them. There's been a lot of hangouts. I can definitely see how this could be a friends to lover story if you want to categorize this as that. I don't know, for me, I guess I have like stricter like standards for what a friends to lover story is. It's not even that it needs to be like childhood friends, but I do want to see the two characters as friends off page as well. Like I want to know that they were friends before the book even started and maybe that's just uh, me. But to me, this isn't necessarily a friends to lover situation. It's just like two people who met and are not having sex yet. You know what I mean? I'm not mad at that though. Like I think it's a cute book and I am enjoying it so far. It's one of those books that I think I'll probably end up giving three stars and I'll keep it on my shelf and like recommend it for certain circumstances as just sort of like a generally fun book, but it's not something that I think is gonna have a super lasting impact though. Willing and ready to have my mind changed. So I am gonna finish this. I'll let you know how I feel about it and then we can move on to our next book, which is going to be Mariana Zapata's Wait For It. Very talented at reading. I just need everybody to know that that, that is the case. I finished this incredibly quickly. <laughs> uh, and as I suspected, this is a three-star read. It was cute. I feel like this is a book that if I had to read this for a list video, which actually it might be included in, in the next list video I do, I don't know, I wouldn't be mad about it because it was like a fine, enjoyable read. And actually I had to read another book by this author for a list video and thought it was totally enjoyable, but not amazing. So maybe that's just Lynn Painter for you. It was fine. Like it was pretty cute. I liked the characters. I did have a couple of issues with it though. The two main issues were the conflict in the book. I thought what the hero did was a little bit like spiteful slash vindictive um, in a way. I don't know if those are really the right words I'm looking for. I wasn't totally happy with like what he did because he 
picked up and it doesn't come up until the end of the book basically and that's like the third act conflict. I don't know. It would just make me really upset if a guy did that even if he did it under the guise of liking me or whatever. Like I didn't totally love that. I wish the third act conflict had been different and then also if you're gonna do sex scenes in a book if it's not going to be totally closed door I'm gonna need a little bit more description than he gripped my hips and pleasured me. I think I said recently in a video in like the tropes I love video that I like when parts aren't listed sometimes. Like I think that can work but it needs to be done in the right way. In this book it was like on page they're doing it but like there's really nothing described and so it's not exciting to read. It's like very uninteresting. If it was just one scene I'd be like okay whatever like the author obviously was trying to go for kind of a closed door thing but wanted to make it a little less than closed door but there are like two or three scenes like that in this book and I'm like at that point just go for it. Like actually describe what's going on. I'm not saying it needs to be as raunchy as a Tessa Bailey book but like give me a little bit more there than kind of what you gave them. And then just as a whole I think this could have been a little bit better developed. I think the friendship was cute. I didn't really understand the progression I guess to a romantic relationship though. I think there's just a lack of subplots here. And I think subplots are pretty important to making convincing romance. Our heroine is kind of trying to figure out her life I guess. She moves out of her shared apartment with a friend and she decides to go back to being an accountant. I guess she took a break from it to be a bartender slash salesperson, um, which is fine. I mean, take a break from your life whenever you want to. Like, I think that's fine. There was no self-discovery, really. It was like our heroine one day decides, I'm gonna find a man and I'm gonna change my life. And she does those things. There's no discussion. And I don't really understand how these two are like perfectly matched for each other besides their banter, you know? I'm not hearing that both of them secretly have always wanted to get married and have babies. I mean, I guess he says that, but he doesn't say that. Also, it, it, there's never a uh, resolution on the fact that like the hero, for instance, he talks about how he has been feeling insecure about being single because his uncle, who was a really cool, kind guy, but a ton of friends, passed away and no one really attended his funeral besides his immediate family. And he was like, well, I don't want to die alone. Like, I don't know. And there's this question of like, what happened to his Uncle Mac's friends? Like, why didn't anyone go to his funeral? That was never actually answered. And maybe it didn't need to be answered in like a, a concrete way. Like, this is why people weren't at his funeral. But like, I wanted our hero to like get some resolution around that and like solution about being alone and you know unless I just completely missed something I don't think that was actually like addressed I just feel like there were a couple of things that were brought up that I was hoping would kind of go there and they just like never really materialized into anything it felt very shallow I guess is what I would say this is very shallow rom-com and not in a bad way like again it was fine I think the, the banter's fun for me to fully enjoy a book I'm gonna need just a little bit deeper not it doesn't have to be like you know a Kennedy Ryan deep but just a little deeper so overall rating for this is a three I liked it I thought it was cute it wasn't incredible the friends to lovers aspect I don't really think I consider this friends to lovers. I'm gonna be honest. Like they, they consider themselves friends. I guess they hung out a few times, but I think I'm gonna give it like a two for the friends to lovers because I just really don't think this was like a girl to the story. Had it just been like, it could have been enemies to lovers and this could have worked. It could have been acquaintances and it would have worked. Like I don't think the friends component was essential to this. So I'm gonna give it two stars for that. Um, and then the sexy factor, also two stars. Like it wasn't the least sexy thing I've ever read, but also like there wasn't enough chemistry for me to care about them getting together. And then when they did, it wasn't even like spelled out for me. So this is gonna get a 2.33, just like Getaway Girl. It feels accurate, I guess, to me because this one had other things going for it. But I think like my enjoyment level was similar to that Tessa Bailey book. So let's move on to some Mariana Zapata and maybe she will provide everything that we need. I mean, it's not gonna be sex. That's definitely not gonna be provided, um, but slow burn. We'll get slow burn. Yay. <laughs> another day, another hot girl walk completed. Sorry that this vlog has not been more exciting. I feel like in the last one, I was in the car, I was doing things. This week has been unexciting. That being said, uh, I have more unexciting things to talk to you about. Wait For It by Mariana Zapata is so freaking boring, y'all. I just really am astounded that this was recommended to me. Love y'all so much. I think this is a patron recommendation. Uh, and apparently a lot of people like this book, so maybe I'm missing something, but reading about Aunt who has guardianship of two young boys and reading about her going to one of the boys uh, select baseball practices and games is just not fun. I, I hate baseball. I've always hated baseball, so that's it's a big thing for me. And then also, it's just so boring. She is a hairdresser and she's taking care of these boys. I think they are her brother's kids, uh, which is sweet, like good for her. She's recently moved to Austin from San Antonio, also good for her, I guess. But I'm just so bored. Uh, I think the love interest is her next door neighbor who's apparently married, which is interesting. And he thought that she was coming on to him. I don't, I just, uh, it's got that like signature Mariana Zapata, like not really enemies to lovers, but like misunderstanding sort of thing. Like he's a little grumpy and like blah, blah, blah. No, it's just not fun. It's just 
just straight up not a fun time. Like, yes, her books are too long, and yes, her heroines tend to, like, ramble a lot. But this one in particular, I'm just like, are you joking? Uh, I recently read, oh god, what was it for the last one? Um, Wall of Winnipeg and Me for the fake dating situation one. And that one wasn't my favorite either, but it wasn't, it wasn't like this. This is just so fucking boring. I just can't, I, whoo. Way, but I'm 30% in, so you know, there's still opportunity for this one to get better. I just don't find that that is going to happen. Um, but I'm updating you now because I want to just like take my makeup off, and this book will definitely be putting me to sleep. Happy Thursday, happy last day of the vlog. <clears throat> This is really beautiful lighting and an extremely beautiful face that you get to look upon as I tell you about Wait For It by Miss Mariana Zapata. By some incredible miracle, I finished this book today and I thought we could chat about my final thoughts and feelings before we move on to the last book, which I'm hoping, you know, turns this vlog around because I feel like this one has not been as exciting as the other two. You know, I can't help that, right? Like I, I didn't predict <laughs> what the books would be and what they would bring me. But this book, I really didn't love. The two main characters are Diana and Dallas, which, you know, we love a little alliterative moment. Again, Diana, she's taking care of these two little kids. They are her brother's kids and her brother sister-in-law passed away and so she is in charge of taking care of them and her life is not easy she's moved into this new place obviously in central texas and she meets dallas her next door neighbor who is kind of grumpy but he coaches the baseball team that her nephew's on and so she's like okay he's a nice guy and they become friends i guess or as friendly i guess as anybody could get in mariana's a book i think that's my issue here like okay was dallas in some ways nicer than all of the other heroes in mariana's a book yeah i would say so he wasn't like, you know, terribly rude, you know, or aggressively kind of aggro like some of the guys in her other books. That being said, I was expecting more from the friends to lovers relationship. I don't know what it has been about the past couple of books, but you can't just call yourself friends without backing it up. And sure, these two had like a couple of conversations and developed like nicknames for each other. To me, that does not a friendship make. I didn't really understand their friendship. It was more like, oh, you're a neighbor and I'm being neighborly. Part of that is that it was a single POV story. And I'm finding that like if you're gonna do a grumpy hero, which he was like even if it was friends to lovers Like he was a grumpy hero I'm gonna need to know more about the hero and why he is the way he is And I'm not saying he did anything unwarranted in this book or that like I was really scratching my head like oh this guy's the worst But I also wasn't like oh wow He's really awesome and i'm just like so excited and I totally understand why she would like want to be with him I just feel like this book was sort of mediocre all around I think the lesson here is that i'm just sort of falling out of love with mariana zapata's writing That's not to say that I can never like her books. I mean, obviously some of her books are still some of my favorites. I really enjoyed Look Off With Love. I really enjoyed Culty and I reread Culty recently and enjoyed it. So, you know, I really don't think that I'm incapable of enjoying her stories. I think it might just be uh, the case of it has to be like the right circumstance and just like the right combination of things, right? I think if you like her stuff, you might enjoy the story because I mean, it's not that different from most of her other books. I just wanted more from it. And I also feel like there were some missed opportunities here. Like, Obviously, there's some harder hitting issues like her brother passed away. She was in an abusive relationship I just don't feel like those things were I don't think they were handled poorly I just don't think they were really handled very much at all Like yes, our main character internalizes a lot of things but beyond that like it doesn't really affect it didn't seem to affect the story very much and um, Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna bring those things up. I would like them to be addressed and or I would love our Heroine and our hero to kind of like talk about those things more, you know, um, this was just very mm, Bleh. for me. I don't know what I would rate this one. The thing is, like, it wasn't a terrible book, objectively, but I did not enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the past two books, so I feel like I'm just gonna have to give it a two star, and that feels kind of mean, but that's just how I feel about it. Um, In terms of the sexiness of this book, I'm gonna give it a one. There was just really nothing sexy about this book to me personally. I mean, Mariana Zapata books are not usually very steamy. Some of them have, like, better sexual tension th than others. This one, to me, was just kind of, like, lacking in that department, so one for sexiness. And then, and in terms of friends to lovers, again, it's like, I don't, I wasn't really convinced these two were friends and I don't really feel like they needed to be friends for the story to work. <laughs> so I think I'm going to give it like one for that as well. That feels so mean. Is this like the lowest rated book? that I've done for one of these videos. I feel like it is, but you know what? That's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. A 1.33. You know, now that I see that number, I think I, f I feel like I might've had that rating for another book that I've done for these before, these videos, this video series. <laughs> but these boys are hungry. 
they want me to feed them breakfast and you know what that's very valid so i'm gonna go do that and then i'm gonna start in on blindside or is it blindsided by amy dawes one of the two i'm gonna start in on that and i'll let you know my 50 percent thoughts and feelings once i get there ignore the mess behind me but you can definitely pay attention to pepper if you would like i'm 50 percent into blindsided by amy dawes and i don't know why i suspected that the author was british she is not she just really likes england and so she decided that she's going to have a heroine who is british and a hero who is scottish and wow if you like a lot of slang you might like this if you want an authentic experience definitely definitely not it as uh, so of this book's better seeming characters freya and mac he is a footballer she is a seamstress and they had sort of a chance meeting whenever he came in to get something i guess tailored or something like that they've had a friendship for a couple of years i think at this point maybe just a year but, but they're friends they they like each other they hang out they watch netflix they you know whatever they're chums and i was excited because it seemed like oh, okay these two like know each other and they're already friends and we're gonna get to see like more of their friendship unfold and it's going to be the situation where they've loved each other the entire time. No, it is not. No, it is very much not that. Instead, what we have is a heroine who is sexually inexperienced and she is looking to date other people and she's very not confident in her own body. She talks about very frequently and is constantly like body shaming herself, which our hero points out, which I guess I appreciate, but also doesn't stop her from thinking that she's not good enough for anyone. Uh, but she is uh, attracted to the barista, I believe, at her favorite coffee shop. Gets asked on a date by him and so our hero is going to like coach her, I guess, before this date. The date goes terribly, but their coaching experience is fun or whatever. I guess she admits her sexual insecurity and like lack of sexual experience to the hero and he's like okay well like what if I train you and like what if I'm the one that you lose your virginity to because like you can trust me I'm your friend and then you'll get that experience out of the way and can date other people. She's like okay sure sounds good. So they have a raucous night of passionate love making and it's amazing and you know just orgasms galore or whatever and so ta-da. I just have very specific taste. I want, if it's going to be a friends to lovers relationship, for them to discover their feelings pretty early on. It seems like both of them are going to discover their feelings throughout the course of the story. It's not going to be a situation in which one person has been liking the other person for a while. Well, obviously our hero is attracted to our heroine ahead of time, but that's it. He doesn't have any like romantic feelings for her. And I think it would have been so much sweeter and more impactful if at the beginning he was like, I've been looking for a way to tell her and now I feel like this is the perfect opportunity. Like I can help her with dating other people and then maybe see that like I've loved her this entire time or something like that I think would have been fun but as it stands right now I'm just like not in love with the book it feels very shallow that I'm just kind of like hooking up and again I think the the slang usage and the use of the word bonnie is a lot like I'm not saying that if you're from Scotland, you definitely don't use that word to describe women. I am not British, right? Like, I'm not from the UK, but I feel like I've watched so much British media at this point to where if I'm reading something that is not written by a British person, it's very easy and obvious to tell. And this one is very easy and obvious to tell that this author's not British. So if that's something that bugs you, maybe don't pick this book up. I'm gonna finish it. It's a book and I've already DNF'd one book, so... You know, it is what it is. I don't hate it. The banter's cute. The banter's fun, at least, even though it's a little bit over the top. So we go ahead and finish it and then we'll be done with the vlog. We've come to the end of the road. I finished Blindsided. <laughs> um, it was cute. I feel like this one could go either way in terms of rating. It could be a two star or a three star, but I think I'm gonna go with three stars. Like it was a fine read. It was fun enough. And in some ways I liked it better than Getaway Girl. So I don't know. I feel like the conflict in this book was not my favorite. I feel like the hero was a little bit obtuse and I feel like he didn't treat our heroine very well, but he was grieving and like dealing with a dying relative. So I guess I kind of understand where he was coming from. So I don't know. I feel like if you don't have the hangups I do about like British slang and, um, American authors writing British characters. I think like maybe you will enjoy the story. It was like cute overall. Definitely a rom-com, definitely nothing super deep, but that's okay. So star rating, I'm gonna give it a three. Sexiness, I think I'm gonna give it a two, which feels a little, maybe not very generous, but even though the, the sex scenes were like definitely on page and described, I just like didn't feel totally invested in the romance, so I couldn't feel totally invested in the sex scenes. And then the friends to lovers aspect, I think I'm gonna give this one a four for friends to lovers, because I do feel like the friends to lovers was an integral part of the story had there not been a friends to lovers component to like would not have been together in the first place so I don't know it feels weird to give this one like an overall three star rating but I guess that kind of makes sense I don't know should this be higher than the other books that I gave three stars to overall you know what we're not gonna get too deep into the weeds of it do the like final final rating what is friends to lovers right like score wise how did friends to lovers match up to the other videos we've done for the series so our overall rating for friends to lovers is a 2.664 which feels not great I think this might be the lowest rated uh video that we've done thus far but I think that's because 
friends to lovers is an incredibly hard trope to pull off. I think that in my humble opinion, it is the superior trope of all of the ones that we've done so far. I do love fake dating, but friends to lovers really is just my favorite. It is just, again, it's so hard to pull off because you have to balance showing the friendship before the book starts, showing the friendship on page, seeing the progression from friends to lovers. It's hard to pull off. It's hard to pull off convincingly and it's hard to make it deeply romantic and also sexy at the same time. But I think books like People Who Meet on Vacation definitely show that this trope is one that can work and be pulled off excellently. I feel like I need to do an updated friends to lovers book recommendation soon. But until then, if you haven't read this one, you should definitely pick it up. Thank you to everyone who gave me recommendations for this video, whether it was, you know, indirectly via Instagram or YouTube, or whether it was directly via Patreon and comments. The next time I do this kind of video, I'm going to be doing a second chance romance edition. So let me know your favorite second chance romances in the comments down below. And if I see one that strikes my fancy, you might be featured or your comment might be featured in my next video. So thanks so much for watching. I love you all so much. And until next time.